Uh, for those of you who are already here, I'll just quickly talk about how we're going to proceed today. I compiled all your slides together into one big file. So for some, whatever random order I put, that's the presentation order. Yeah, I actually don't know what I based on. <laughs> Uh, so, later on when I go to the next slide, if it's your team, come up here and then the next team will be decided by your team, whoever clicks next. And every team has four minutes. Um, I'll tell you when you have one minute left. Okay? So, if you have the hard copy, please submit it now. And um, if we go to a team that no one's here, we'll skip it and we'll come back to the team later. So, the first team is Lee the Stoll. <laughs> Uh, stand over here. Yeah, and also when you talk, uh, I think stand behind the table. Yeah, like right off to the side where you're Yeah, because you're, you'll be recorded today. And your voice will okay. be captured. Ready? Ready? Uh -huh. Okay, good morning, guys. So, this is um, our project. It's called the Vegan Legend Store. And our team is called Team X. And my team is Yu Shun, Jay, Shawa, and Nansiang. And actually, uh, is any of my team here? <laughs> okay, I'm so the only person in class. That was a great point that I was doing it. Anyways, um, so why did we choose to do, um, do the League of Legends store? Um, there's the reason for, for threefold. First, um, we realized when we formed our team that all of us really like playing League of Legends. We all played it on our spare time. Um, the second reason was because League of Legends is a very popular game. Um, its fan base is known as across the globe, and um, each year they host like a huge tournament in like a big in a country, and lots of people attend it more than the Super Bowl at least. And the third reason was because we wanted to do well in the class. Um, I think that was pretty good. So the requirement analysis. Um, since we all have pretty much the same requirement analysis, I won't be going to all like eleven of them in detail. Instead, I'm going to focus more on the requirements that um, we added, the two additional requirements. So the first one was the item combination system. So if any of you aren't familiar with the League of Legends game system, uh, when you play it, you could buy items there, and you could combine items into bigger items or better. And so that was one of our core features for our um, shop, our League of Legends shop. Um, you're allowed to um, buy virtual items on League of Legends store, and then um, later um, take those uh, items and recombine them again into a, another, another item. So that was one thing that we did. Um, the second was our promotion system. Um, the way that League of Legends make, um, makes money is through microtransactions. So um, instead of, instead of like paying for the whole game itself, um, you instead of just buy little ch little um, features, little cosmetics, or um, game items in League of Legends. So what we did was that we went to create promotion systems so that um, once you become a user of the store, you get periodic up updates about of sales, of features, and new updates in the game. And also, you can sell physical and virtual items here. Um, I know that League of Legends is a virtual game, uh, but we allow um, suppliers to sell um, physical items, like costly items, um, <coughs> um, physical models of Teemo, and things like that. And of course, we have a bidding system, which is required by everyone. And so this is our year model. Um, actually, I don't know what everyone else's year model is like. I particularly don't really like this one because it's so big, unlike in class. But um, so if you look at it, it's, there's three main themes. Well, there's three um, sections. There's a there's three sections. There's a buyer, the item, and the supplier, and they have many relationships between themselves, and um, they have relationships that are independent of each other from the buyer, the item, and the supplier. And I guess I won't be explaining this too much in detail. Uh, yeah, here it is. And so action steps. So um, after um, the phase one, um, we decided that we had um, more things to do, of course, um, and we decided to do this. Um, the first was to set the units at least twice a week. Um, four out of five members on our team um, are free after class. 
And so we usually, it's been a comment that we would just go to IST afterwards and work on it for an hour at least. Uh, second is to actually um, use the sauna more effectively. I know that in the first phase that uh, we really didn't understand sauna that well and we didn't really know how to, um, yeah, to uh, assign the tasks to each other. So we're going to do this more efficiently this time around. And of course, finish all the phase two project requirements. And that's all. Thank you. Content. We are calling it Steam Backwards. If all of you know of what Steam is, we're basically redesigning that for ourselves. Um, we're going to have users be able to buy, sell, and bid on video game uh, content, expansions, and any physical items like collectibles. And the sellers will be able to set the price of the content that they want to put up. And they don't even have to have a price up. Uh, for example, user-related content or user-created content could be set up for free. And um, the front end will focus on um, an interaction between the buyers or users and sellers, and the back end will communicate with the database. So we won't be going over the functions that are pretty much are going to be used almost by everyone. Um, the added functions that we incorporated were um, with delivery, and, uh, and the delivery of items is dependent on the type of content. For example, if they buy a digital video game, then it will be emailed to them, or if they buy any physical form of the video game content, then it will be shipped to them. Uh, we also have a shop where users can see all the items sold by an individual user. So say if one guy is selling five separate items, that would be considered a shop because they are in individually selling five items. And we will also be having a wish list where users can save what they want to buy later and then they can rank them on how much they want to buy the game. And here are the other functions which I won't be going into. So I will be focusing on the entity relationship diagrams, and the first one will be the user entity and user transaction rate relationship. Uh, the user represents individuals who register to the, uh, to the site with the necessary attributes, and the username is the primary key. And the user transaction um, relationship has two arrows to represent that. Uh, two arrows from the user represent that when you buy one item, it is two users, the buyer and the seller. Uh, and we used um, an ISA uh, block for an item because in our store, an item can be two things. It can either be an auction item or a sale item. So a sale item means it's being sold at a fixed price, while auction means people can bid on them. And then we have relationships uh, for the category. Um, and the categories are can be placed within other categories for hierarchy. Um, and we also have the address entity relationship, which shows it's a weak entity because, it's, um, because if there's no user, then we don't need to have the address. And basically, the phone entity relationship and credit card entity relationship uh, are the same exact thing, pretty much, for, as address. It just is for phone and credit card. Uh, the supplier entity relationship is uh, one of our biggest relationships, and it shows the supplier uh, keywords, supplier train, uh, transaction, and search by relationships. And 
then we have the shop entity and wish list entity relations, which are closely related. Um, the shop entity has participation key constraints on items, um, and the wish list entity relationship has key and participation uh, constraints. And then we have the user stock and entity relationship and supplier stock and entity relationship, which is pretty straightforward. And thank you and enjoy something so far. Yes. 
So good morning. So uh, uh, so the project which we are uh, focusing on is termed as Native Cat. So I'll just move on to the next slide. So uh, the motivation behind this project is the idea which we got is from a uh, few websites like Coursera, EDX. How stuff works. So these are basically online educational portals where uh, uh, you log in and uh, you browse for courses of your area of interest, and then uh, you get to know about programs from leading universities, and uh, you get to know programs from leading industrial partners, and then you enroll to that. And uh, uh, it's like a full-time program which you do. It's equivalent to a full-time program which you do on a real-time classroom. So we were trying to create a database where we could uh, have the list of courses, list of categories and then browsing and searching through that database and then registering for the courses and then uh, tracking the course schedule and then uh, uh, we, were, we were also planning to uh, integrate it with social media like integrating it with a career site so that once you complete the course and once you get a certificate it will be uploaded to a career site. Where, where we maintain a list of employers who can view it. So uh, that's pretty much our primary goal here. So, uh, so our primary goal is to develop the infrastructure for the database management system with this inspiration behind that. So, uh, so basically we have divided the entire architecture of this database into four models. One is the core model or the sales model which contains details about the courses. And then we have the human resources model which will deal about the registration of the users, the list of employers who are participating in it, and the list of institutions who are participating in it, and the uh, list of industrial partners who want to, or who are looking for projects in their field of interest. And then we also have information technology model which will deal about browsing, searching, and we also have a feature of bidding. So this bidding is different from the normal bidding which we see on an e-commerce site. So this is like, since a course can be registered, there is no limit on the number of users who are registering for the course since it, since it is online. So, but the professor can't uh, handle the questions or uh, handle the queries from all the users at the same time. So the bidding feature is in such a way that students who wanted to post their queries, so they book for a slot and then uh, whenever they get the slot like say a professor can allow 20 hours per week for the students to clarify their doubts. So it's on a bidding basis so whomsoever get it that week they will be able to clarify their doubts with the professor on a face to face communication. So that's how we um, took that idea. So that information technology model will deal with bidding, searching and browsing through the categories. And then we have the public relation model which will uh, uh, interact with the social media and then uh, yeah we will uh, get into the ER diagram which contains the overview of it. So we have the courses here uh, and uh, the courses will be having a schedule and uh, that schedule will link to the HR model which will have the registered users and the professors who are handling the courses. And then we will have the courses which are split into categories. So by categories we mean all the we have engineering, arts, humanities, economics, and all that. So the IT team will the IT team will handle the browsing, searching of those categories, and then all the courses will be aided by resources. By resources, we mean online video tutorials, eBooks, and all that. And we also added two new features. One is trending, and one is impact. So impact is something like a course which is already completed and uh, which generated a lot of interest in the users or the students and which just I'll wrap. So, um, and then trending is something like a current course which generated a lot of interest among the students and uh, which needs to be advertised <coughs> in the website. So, yeah, that's pretty much we had for, uh, thank you. <coughs>
Hi everyone, we're Team Squad, and all of us are here except for Austin today. And so our company's name is Nile. Um, it's kind of like Amazon, but it's a better, better river. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the newest competitor to the online <coughs> commerce marketplace. Our goal is to put Amazon and eBay out of business because we're going to combine the functionality of both of these sites and just kind of do a better job all together. Um, basically, it's going to be a buying, selling, and bidding platform similar to Amazon and eBay. Um, who can sell? Uh, any registered Nile user can post items for sale or auction. So they can set it up so that they could sell it um, for a fixed price, just like uh, a company on Amazon, or they can sell it like an auction like they would on eBay. Um, Nile will also be selling items from various suppliers. Uh, through the Nile store, so that's basically like Amazon has its own brand that basically buys from other uh, companies like Nike or uh, what have you, and they'll sell it right on the store. Okay, so organization. All the all the items will be organized into various categories and subcategories, so you can like try you can filter what you want by using a browsing system, and you can browse by category. So like let's say you have like, clothing. You can search for clothing, shirts, and find a specific item that you want. You can also search by keyword. So let's say you want a specific item, like um, curtain. I don't know. Um, so you can like look for a, a specific curtain by a certain brand. You'll find it, and you can either buy it from the marketplace uh, directly, or you can buy it from other users who have like an auction or selling it for a fixed price. So for the uh, tables, we have. Uh, users, suppliers, addresses, items, ratings, categories, phone numbers, credit cards, purchases, bids, and auction details. Um, certain tables in there, uh, like the project asked for, have uh, multiple rows for comp for other rows, so like users can have multiple addresses or phone numbers, things like that. We chose not to put our ER diagrams on our slides just because it's only four minutes and I don't think can really fully understand them in that amount of time. But we put them in our um, report and we basically mapped out every single one of these tables and their relationships to each other. So. <laughs> cheap and then also be able to sell like um, or we have our auction um, um, thing that uh, college students can like auction non-perishable items off and then to keep uh, a good uh, rapport with like uh, the seller and the buyer there's a rating system that we also model um, in our site as well as different categories for each of the items and uh, yeah Alright, so for our ER diagram, we have three main entities. We have the user, supplier, and the sale item. It's a little confusing. Uh, but for each of them, we've listed out some attributes, but those aren't final and those aren't like, the only ones. Uh, between the user and supplier, there are two uh, relationships, the sale and auction. And both of those relationships also include 
another entity called the sale item because for every transaction there's uh, a product associated with it. And also, finally, for the ratings, uh, each of the users and suppliers have ratings like for each entity and um, they're weak entities because without a user, there's no user. Alright, and the last is our action plans. Like we have a purpose of providing college towns with groceries and this design will have auction and sale and uh, we will strive to make more user friendly based off of original user and sellers. Like it would just say it would just store whether each user is a premium member or not. 
And if they are, then they can get like free shipping and discounts on certain items. This is our ER diagram. We realized it is very big, but we want it to be um, very concise in making it. So our entire conceptual design, if you can look kind of up towards the top, payment card, uh, then registered user, and then sale items is at its fourth, and everything else kind of goes off of that. Also for the action plan, it's just a week a little bit uh, want to plan ahead. So we use some framework for real, which is called real on Rails for the web application. And for our database layer, we're going to use MySQL to store our data. And, uh, thank you, everyone. Sorry. Thank you. create a website similar to Amazon and eBay so we can uh, sell item, items in two major ways one bidding and then second one is direct purchase um, so after uh, serious discussions we uh, use we come up with uh, our ER diagram first by coming running, running through the 11 basic functions and then adding uh, additional features such as customer reviews and uh, recommendation, which is uh, re uh, searching histories, and um, here we will break them down into uh, small sections and uh, briefly explain our approach. Right, I'm going to start off by talking about the customer schema. So here you can see the ER model and the uh, attributes associated with the schema. And basically, as you're signing up with a customer, um, you know we're just going to need your basic information your full name, username, password, and your email. You have the option to put your, your phone number um, if you want that by preference. Uh, we don't need your credit card information at first, but um, you won't be able to or purchase any items. And uh, there are shipping addresses that you can add. Um, we have search history because um, we don't care about your privacy. Um, but um, a search history is basically uh, Basically, a feature that we thought of. Uh, we can, we can uh, alternatively it's called recommendations. Basically, what we're going to do is just collect the tags and the product name for each product that you search, and we can just display on your home page for recommendations. And, and okay. And also, we have additional features called custom review, which. Well, haven't implemented this part of my slide yet. It's going to be, it's going to be a database connects to customers. That's going to be sellers rating on the customers. So in that case, uh, if we're if a customer has a low rating or something, the seller could like be protected somehow and dealing with whether he's going to deal with him or not. And with a big with a purchase with involving a really big amount of item and money transactions, it's easier to like to see whether he's with a good, good credit or not. And the sellers will be somehow protected through this function. So for the seller schema, uh, it's pretty much the same as the uh, customer schema, except there will be a company attribute where you'll be able to add the company description, contact information, and uh, so on. Um, and uh, the other differences are you will, um, the seller will add a merchant account instead of just a credit card or debit card so that it can collect all the payments. And it will also hold all the product information on the products and a rating and from 0 to 10 and all the transactions. Okay, so in this case we have an item and bidding process. Basically, uh, we have to store the physical information about the, of the, all the items within the items database. And each of them have an identify, uh, unique identifier. The identifier is going to bring to the bidding, to the payment transaction, where all the bidding process will happen in this database, taking data starting 
finish time and reserve price. Once the payment finish time is reached, it's going to go uh, ownership. It's been created for one specific users, and that going to carry us over to the orders and delivery. Yeah, after a uh, uh, customer decides to buy or he wins a auction, uh, we'll need an order to record that. And then we'll go to transactions to pay, make payments and then go to the deliveries. Uh, so the electronic info table just contains extra information about an item that's not uh, physical. So some of that information is categories, tags, reviews. Category supports browsing. Um, there should be an extra relation that links back to categories there. Uh, tags is like categories, but it's user defined. So uses submitted categories that you can then search. Uh, and reviews, uh, there can be multiple reviews about an item, and then that can be uh, averaged on the front end. Data compound rating. All right, thank you. Thank you. We have browsing and searching. So browsing and searching works in a couple of different ways. Um, you can go ahead and browse based on different categories, different tags, and basically whatever you want to look up. You can look up a specific uh, user uh, if he's selling something and if you already know what you're looking for. You can look up a specific keyword. And uh, if you want to search, then you can go ahead and use one of the categories and then filter them out uh, based on tags. And uh, yeah, particular different. Like you, uh, you don't have actually have to use just one single tag. You can use multiple tags. So if you want to search for a template, let's say for a blog, then you can go ahead and use personal and then blog, and that will give you templates for personal blog. Um, 
Apart from that, uh, the, how the sale works is that we allow the users to bid on items and we allow the users to purchase items based on a fixed price. So if you see something which has a bid going on, uh, then you can go ahead and bid on it and uh, every single bid has to be $2 or whatever the price is set more than uh, the previous bid. And uh, once you have purchased the item, uh, the delivery is basically handled by the seller itself, so he'll probably provide you with a link uh, to a hosted server where you can download the file. So, bidding was already explained in the last slide. Uh, order and sales reports. So, the two things that were different with the two added features were uh, personalized seller reports for every seller. So, instead of having like an admin uh, report for our company, uh, we also have sales reports for every seller. Uh, they can access that through their dashboard. Um, the other thing is the tags. The tags are a cooler way to say keyboard, I guess. Um, but they do, um, the, every item is given a set of tags. And an item can also have uh, like an uh, uncategorized tag, I guess, uh, where they aren't really sorted into any keywords. Um, so yeah. I think one team was hit. because what's a good website if it doesn't have requirements? Um, main entity of everything is a sale item. You can't have an e-commerce site without selling things. Um, and our sale items are broken into sales or auctions. Um, and for both sales and auctions, we users are able to set a minimum price um, to sell their items at. If it doesn't meet that minimum price, it's kicked off and removed from the server. Uh, Every item has a specific category it needs to be represented by, and each of those categories has subcategories, and those can go into farther subcategories. Uh, and we took suppliers in a different way. Uh, suppliers are the, pretty much the manufacturers of the items, and every item should have a supplier because every item is manufactured by somebody. Next, we have categories. Uh, categories can be household items, books, movies, whatever. Um, and each item is pretty much connected to a category. An item cannot be categoryless. Uh, and each category has lessers, lesser categories within it. Um, then we have our suppliers. Uh, suppliers supply items. They are the manufacturers. They have a specific ID that makes them unique from everybody else. They have an address. Uh, they also have to list a phone number. And they are, like I said, attached to each item. Uh, now, the next biggest point to our uh, website are the registered users. Registered users can be broken down into buyers, sellers. Buyers are the ones who buy your items, and the sellers are the ones who sell the items, of course. Uh, only sellers can sell, and only buyers can buy. Uh, then, once a buyer has completed their transaction for the certain item, uh, they must read it. Every, every user needs to rate the said transaction, and then through that transaction, since every transaction is associated with a seller, we can then rate the seller. Um, browsing, browsing is pretty straightforward as well. Uh, this is going to be kind of like a view of all the, all the items that match a certain category or a certain price, stuff like that uh, will allow browsing, uh, allow users to browse items specifically. Searching, searching is kind of like what we know all today. You put in a keyword or maybe, maybe a description and then our database will spit back an item or items that fit that description. Next biggest point would be a sale. 
uh, every 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 time a user completes a transaction, it that uh, item becomes an ordered item, and then that order item has an address, uh, a unique order ID. That way, users can distinguish between other uh, other orders. And same thing with auctions as well. They are given an order ID. The delivery information is given, and so is the uh, payment information. Next is bidding. Uh, this is between a user and an auction, a buyer and an auction. Every bid must be greater than $2 or it's thrown away. Uh, Timestamps are also given, so that way a uh, bid cannot exceed the, the time given for a certain auction. And so in case someone bids too late, they get cut out. Order sales reports, these are given for the uh, sellers so that they can track their business and see how they're doing. Delivery straightforward. Every every item that needs to be sold has to have the delivery address given by the buyer, or else nowhere to sell, nowhere to give to. Uh, order history. This is the one of the first prereqs uh, that we decided to add. This way, a user can look at all the items that they bought, and then a wish list. Uh, users can pick their favorite items that they want to keep or buy in the future. And then this is our ER diagram. It's a little stretched, but. Low complex too. So, and you can see our uh, users are in the center, and the sale items at the top to represent our biggest <coughs> features. So, that's it. Okay, we have two more teams. and you have class you can leave. Uh, browsing, 
pretty self-explanatory. It's just going to be a menu, larger category, you pick one, go down, smaller subcategory, until you get to the very end, which will show all the items in that subcategory. All this is the searching. Um, is the, this shows the interface of the searching uh, web page. Uh, the search box to enter the keywords. Um, the drop down menu uh, one is for searching categories, and the other one is for uh, uh, product categories, and to restrict the searching results. So the sale, the, there's nothing new for the sale. The sale is can be sold by the fixed price. And for bidding, there are two kinds of bidding. One, the uh, seller provides the um, reserved price, and the other one, when the seller doesn't provide, provide the reserved price, the uh, system just uh, allows the um, buyer to input the bid price. So, uh, for um, for each category, we'll have uh, weekly or monthly reports. And this will allow uh, suppliers or sellers better understand uh, which uh, products are in high demand. Um, so the delivery system is pretty standard, and we want to make it uh, as simple as possible. So everything is about tracking number and just uh, sending it to the Tries to avoid fishing. Um, one of our new functions that we put in is a primary settings because you have multiple address, um, you have multiple addresses and multiple credit card infos. This is just going to set a primary credit card, primary address, and then you can just it's automatically going to put that one in first. The feedback allow uh, function allows the uh, user to input compare the description of the items with the product of the item this receive and the big comments. So, uh, in conclusion, we would like to present the uh, ER diagram. Uh, it may seem a little ugly, but uh, we look closer. Uh, you'll see that uh, it's pretty, I mean, all, all relationships and all ideas between items are pretty strong. And it will be easy to navigate, to construct the whole system.
for the more you use the website, the more points you collect and the more points you accumulate, uh, you get better accesses to discount, clearance, sales, etc. So successful purchases, successful bids, creating reviews and ratings give you more points. And based on the accumulated, accumulated points, you can be a platinum level customer, a silver level customer, or a gold level customer. Talking about ratings, uh, our users can rate and review items and based on their rating we will um, be showing a 0 to 5 point rate, star rating. Browsing is based on the categories and the new feature we have added is filtering. So once you've searched for an item or browsed to an item, you can filter them based on price, brand, sizes if applicable and the rating of the item. Sales is pretty much self-explanatory. You can have a sale based on a fixed price or you can have a bidding option. Searching is keyword based and we are going to try and use synonyms and correct misspellings to have an improved searching experience. Shopping cart is the new feature that we have added. We keep track of what users have selected to buy, know at all times what the total price of the transaction is, be able to buy more than one item at a time and keep shopping after selecting an item. So basically it's a way to group together the orders users have already placed. Pickup request is another feature we have added. This basically allows user to eliminate the delivery charges and you can reserve the item for pickup up to 24 hours. So this also means that you get the item you want faster. And then we have allowed users to have request items that are not available on the website. This will keep track of what users want to see available and allow suppliers who are also our registered users to uh, keep track of the demand. Uh, bidding works pretty much the same way. The extra thing we have added over here is that we allow uh, bids to be increased automatically once a user sets a maximum bid. If another user has a bid more than them, their bid automatically gets updated. Uh, order and sales reports help in business model an analysis and delivery is basically handled by the supplier and we confirm from the customer if the item has been delivered and then update the order state. And FAQs is another extra feature. It is a list of frequently asked questions that we will be storing in form of basically categories like login issues, bidding, payments and refunds, shipping and returns, and managing your account. And finally, the conceptual schema. This is pretty complicated. I'm just going to go through one or two points. For example, registered users uh, can be customers and suppliers, and we allow an overlap for it. And uh, they both have to pretty much cover the major category and that is how we recognize them. There are several weak and entities based on and the designs and this is pretty much how we are going to design our templates. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. 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 Thank you.